This is the Suzuki Espresso Special Edition, one of the most popular brand new cars in the Philippines today. It's a basic, no-frills city commuter, and yet it still remains as one of the top choices in the small car category. So what gives, right? I mean, dude, why is it so popular? Well, guys, I got to drive the Suzuki Espresso Special Edition for an entire week, and in this video, I am going to tell you exactly why it is so popular. Let's do this. Here in the Philippines, a car is considered as the second largest purchase you can make next to a house. Despite a population of 112 million people and counting, there are less than 5 million vehicles in the Philippines as of end 2021. To many, owning a brand new car is a dream come true, which is why the Suzuki Espresso sells like hotcakes. The Suzuki Espresso Special Edition retails for only 588,000 Philippine pesos, making it the most affordable brand new vehicle from a mainstream car brand. But price aside, does the Suzuki Espresso offer more in the drive? Well dude, let's find out. Here at Reagan's Rides, we do car reviews of SUVs, sports cars, trucks, and everything in between. So subscribe and hit the bell. Now before we get to the reasons why the Suzuki Espresso is so popular, Let's see first what we sacrifice for that asking price. I mean, to be perfectly honest, dude, the price tag of 588,000 Philippine pesos for a brand new car is really the biggest draw of this vehicle. I mean, that's like the price of a mid-level 600cc big bike. But you do get a car that has air conditioning and can seat five people. <laughs> The thing is, dude, what you don't get is, first up, a robust set of safety features. You see, the Suzuki Espresso was notorious for getting a zero rating in the global NCAP a few years back, uh, but it has since been updated uh, to three stars. You know, it's been updated to three stars in that same global NCAP safety rating. Which, if you consider it, dude, in today's times, yeah, it's still mediocre. Uh, but as one commenter said before, well, it is better than riding a bike. Oh, oh yeah, and uh, this Suzuki Espresso in the Philippines comes with Isofix anchors, which the unit in, used in the global NCAP safety test uh, didn't really have. So I believe the Philippine spec Espresso would probably get you know, a higher safety rating than the unit used there. Now, aside from safety, well, the NVH is also sacrifice. See, we're on the highway now, and I don't know if you could see it or hear it, but I'm speaking up a little bit louder than usual because the highway noise makes me feel like I'm driving an open-top convertible without the, well, without the open-top and the sex appeal. <laughs> now, there's also that typical vibration uh, that you get on idling, which is pretty common amongst the budget city cars that have a three-cylinder gasoline engine. Now, mind you though, the idling, that vibration on idling, uh, it's not really as bad as the, as the Toyota Wego TRD Sport that I also got to drive uh, a, year, a year or so back. The thing is, dude, if you're expecting the smoothest engine here, yeah, the Espresso will not give you that. Another sacrifice here is the transmission. I mean, the Suzuki Espresso in the Philippines only has a five-speed manual transmission. So those who prefer an automatic will have to look elsewhere. Or uh, should they? <laughs> I mean, dude, there are rumors uh, that there's gonna be uh, an automatic variant of the Suzuki Espresso coming to the Philippines soon. Yeah, but... As of now, as I make this video, yep, the manual is your only option. So that might be a drawback uh, to some people out there. So 
with all of these sacrifices, why the heck is this vehicle still flying off the shelves? Well, dude, for one, there's that cuteness factor. I mean, man, seriously, it's so cute. Check it out. It's like a, it's like a Jimny Jr. in orange. And uh, speaking of orange, the, the espresso can be had in these really loud and vibrant paint jobs like orange or blue or red. Uh, now granted, there is a white which is pretty boring and that also explains why I haven't seen a white espresso on the road. But you would do well to stick to these bright paint jobs because it's a huge advantage to the Suzuki espresso. You see this bright orange color makes it so much easier to see the espresso at night. Uh, so, yeah, because it's so tiny, dude. I mean, it's so tiny that orange paint job really helps to make it more visible at night. Uh, speaking of night, the Espresso Special Edition still comes in these, uh, well, with these halogen headlight units because you can't really expect to get uh, LED lighting units in a vehicle that costs 588,000 brand new, right? I mean, dude, don't push your luck. Now, when you go to the side, that's where you'll see just how tiny this vehicle is. I mean, at a hair over three and a half meters in length, the Suzuki Espresso is the smallest Japanese city car that's being sold outside of Japan. Now, to put things in proper perspective, my own Mazda MX-5 Miata has a length that's almost at four meters which means that my tiny sports car is even longer than this Suzuki Espresso. Now, dude, that tiny footprint is a huge advantage to the Espresso, especially when you're driving around tight city streets like what we have here in Manila. I mean, changing lanes, zipping around town, and going to areas where larger cars can go is not only easy, but it's also quite fun. Now, dude, this is the Espresso Special Edition, which also means that we get aesthetic upgrades here uh, from the plastic claddings on the door panels to the front and rear skid plates and a differently designed 14-inch alloy wheels here. Now, the thing is the mechanical bits still remain the same as the base spec Espresso GL, which means that we get ventilated disc brakes up front drums at the back and for the suspension it rides on macpherson's up front and a torsion beam at the back now the ground clearance of the espresso is another advantage of this small city car because the ground clearance is 180 millimeters which dude is almost as high as some city crossovers out there Step inside the cabin and you get pretty much the basics here. I mean, this is a simple, straightforward, no frills cabin with fabric seats. We've got a urethane steering wheel that doesn't even have any buttons except for the horn button. And we have a centrally mounted um, gauge cluster there. Well, it's not even a cluster. But mind you, it is a digital gauge that shows your speed. It's a speedometer and we have a digital fuel gauge there. Now, if you'll notice, we don't get a tachometer here, which means that if you're shifting this five-speed manual Suzuki Espresso, you'll have to shift by ear or by feel, depending on you. Now, dude, this is really as basic as it can get because even the side mirrors get manual adjustments here instead of uh, power adjustments. So, um, I think it's best if we just count our blessings here. See, first, the Espresso Special Edition gets a 7-inch touchscreen infotainment system with Bluetooth connectivity, thank you for that. And we also have a very cold air conditioning here, although the controls really look like they came from a car that was manufactured in the 1990s. Now, we also have uh, power windows here, but the power windows are only up front because the windows at the back are still muscle power operated. <laughs> now, dude, we also have a central door locks here. Thank you for that as well. Uh, yeah, and we also have a glove box. I mean, we have a glove box here because even my own Mazda MX-5 Miata doesn't come with a glove box. So thank you for that. 
There's also a tiny shelf here on the passenger side which can, you know, which can house some of your smaller items. And we have a pair of cup holders which can fit my 600 ml clean canteen. Although you will have to be a bit forceful about fitting it in. So because it doesn't really go in fully, it's kind of large, you know? It's kind of big for the cup holders. It's a little too big. Yeah, that's what she said. Anyway, I would rather just put the clean canteen in the bottle holders on the door panels. Now, there's also ambient lighting at the back, a red ambient lighting, which well, I thought it was ambient lighting, but apparently it came from the brakes. So every time you step on the brakes, yeah, the brake lights will light up and some of those red light will bleed into the rear part of this espresso. Now, some people might say, oh, yuck, it's, it's so cheap. But uh, personally, I, I find it really cool. I mean, it's cool that the brake lights would do that. <laughs> so aside from the cuteness factor, you have to drive the espresso to see why it has such a large appeal. Now, I've said this about Suzuki's in the past, and I will say it again because it also applies to the Suzuki Espresso. I mean, we have a very engaging and fun to drive vehicle here. Now, the one liter three cylinder gasoline engine may only put out 67 horsepower, but dude, it is a peppy engine here. Now, the ergonomics of this cabin is also spot on. I mean, my hand just naturally falls on the shifter here and the driving position is upright, which makes it so easy to drive. It actually feels like I'm driving a small truck. Now, the good thing here is being such a basic car as well, then you can expect that the maintenance cost, you know, the PMS, it's also going to be quite affordable. Then there's the clutch. It's light, uh, a bit on the high side though, which is easily adjustable and the gears slot in quite easily. The steering feel is also on point and given the small size of this car, well, handling is really fun when you're going around the city. But dude, we are going up to the Skyway now and I am a little bit curious. Can this Suzuki Espresso yeah, reach 100 kilometers per hour on the Skyway. <laughs> well, we are going to find out uh, right now. But first, well, we do have a three star safety rating here. So let me make it into a four stars. Hold on, give me my helmet. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. There you go. I got my crash helmet on. We now have a four star safety rating. <laughs> and we're heading to uh, to the Skyway. Okay. This is the entry ramp, guys. Let's see. <laughs> Can the Suzuki Espresso go up to triple digit speeds? And let's accelerate. Woo! Yeah, you could really hear that engine. <laughs> We are now at, whoa, we're at 95. Okay, let's go. And I'm still at fourth gear, guys. Woo! And yes, we are now at 100. Oh, dude, get out of my way. <laughs> Up, back down to 95. And we are at 100. Yeah. So, dude, I can tell you right now, the Suzuki Espresso, despite, despite its small size, can easily go up to triple digit speeds. We're at 100. Let's try to go up a little bit higher than 100 here. You know what, dude, it can, it can. Of course, we're not gonna test like how far it can go, but it definitely can, dude. Yep, though I wouldn't recommend staying at triple digit speeds for a long time because of course that noise, you know, the NVH, the highway noise getting in the cabin, it can get a little bit annoying, but it's nice to know. Nice to know that the Suzuki Espresso, despite being the most affordable city car you can get and the smallest city car available in the country, can go up to highway speeds. Now, if you think about it, all the other aspects of the drive of this Suzuki Espresso is spot on. 
I mean, visibility is great for such a small car. Uh, the brake feel is fantastic and the fuel economy is also incredible. I mean, city drives returned to me 13 kilometers per liter and mind you, that was a little bit of rush hour traffic. Now, highway drives like this, well, dude, I am getting 22 kilometers per liter, which is pretty phenomenal. Now, as for the passenger comfort at the back, uh, let's go there and try it out. You know, for such a small car, the Espresso offers a decent amount of backseat space here. I mean, you could fit two average Asian dudes and uh, they will be quite comfortable. The thing is, if you try to fit a third one in the middle, then uh, yeah, it might get a little bit sticky. I mean, you might start a skin relationship with each other. Now, being the smallest city car available in the Philippines, well, naturally, headroom will also be a bit of an issue uh, if you're somebody who's like 5'10 or maybe taller. Uh, but for a 5'6 dude like myself, well, uh, headroom is pretty good. Now, the legroom here is quite fantastic. I mean, I didn't expect this for the, for the smallest city car available in the Philippines because we do get an, an ample amount of legroom here. Now, since uh, the legroom is quite good, maybe they sacrifice a little bit on the cargo space. Let's go check it out. Surprisingly, not at all. I mean, this is a small city car, but we still get a decent amount of cargo space here. I mean, the Espresso has 239 liters of trunk capacity, which means that it's still good enough for a medium-sized luggage here, as well as some smaller items that can be placed on top of the luggage and even on the sides. So despite the fact that the Espresso is the smallest city car that you can buy brand new here in the Philippines, well, it still scores quite well when it comes to space and practicality. It's easy to dismiss the Suzuki Espresso Special Edition being one of the most affordable city cars in the country today. But look past the basic amenities and the slightly lower safety rating and you get a fun and zippy little city car for the price of a crossover down payment. Not to mention that it's a great car to learn how to drive a manual transmission. So now we know why the Suzuki Espresso is such a popular car here in the Philippines. It's not just the price, but also the fun factor and its overall ease of driving. Thanks for watching.